One of the common things that we see in math is basically using patterns. And in patterns, you can see a whole bunch of different uh, things that occur in nature. So there's a thing called a golden ratio. Uh, there's also concepts that when you draw the human body, you basically draw the head first and then draw your body from there. That the human body's like eight human heads or something like that. So uh, you can definitely see some patterns. And one of the patterns that we have in math is the pattern that's called the natural base. And what this is, is it's basically a, a pattern that we see throughout time that as certain things that happen, you, you tend to see this number come, a, come about a bunch. So it's kind of like finding pi. So they didn't really know what pi was until they started comparing all the circles to uh, your nice little diameter. And they were able to come up with, hey, based on your diameter, you can figure out the outside of the circle and it always gets multiplied by this number of pi. And they kind of do this with a natural base. Natural base is very similar to pi. It's just e. So we have like e to the x power. And you can see what e is. And we'll write it up here a couple times. A uh, couple ways to find e. If you hit second ln. So second ln. N pops up e to some power. If we just type in 1, then it tells you what that is. Or if you hit second divide, it will give you e without an exponent. But you can see it's, uh, I'll see if I can memorize a couple of them, 71, 82, 81, 82. So, 71, 82, 81, 82. There's 8 at the end. It may look like it repeats, but it really doesn't. It's called an irrational number. So this is one of those things that I talked about maybe on the first day of class when we were talking about irrational numbers. Uh, and I was giving you guys the opportunity to try to guess some, and most of you guys got pi, and then a lot of the square roots of non-perfect numbers. And then uh, here you go is another example. It's your natural base. So e is equivalent to that. Of course, that is just e to the first power. So this is e to the first power not e to the x. And the way we calculate e is this. It's 1 plus 1 over n to the x power. And as x goes to, or I guess I should use the same variable instead of using two different ones. So if you use an x, we'll use n. So as n gets larger and larger and larger, uh, you get closer and closer to this value of e. And this occurs basically throughout uh, many different things. So we'll look at a couple examples of how we, how we find interest in a bank and stuff like that, and we'll eventually use this E. Now, one thing we will go back to is this. What's the, gr what's the shape of the graph? So if we are graphing F of X is equal to E to the X power, you know, it's going to be very hard for us to figure out what, you know, E to the 2 second power is. And the reason, of course, that being is because it's not going to be a pretty number. It's going to be a decimal. Uh, it's going to be a big number. But we can actually graph this based on what we already know. I'm pretty confident in graphing e to the x power. To look just like this. And the reason I'm confident in that is because the green graph was, or no. Yeah, the green graph is 3 to the x power. The red graph is 2 to the x power. So our graph of e to the x power, in fact, let me do that one more time. It probably should be a little bit closer to the green one. And the reason it should be a little bit closer to that is because e is 2.71828182828 or something like that. So it will be a little bit closer to 3 than it will be to 2, but it should fit somewhere in between because that's the value of e.